Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. presentation on Black History Month. So just want to read off of this card real quick. Everybody got one of these? Everybody got one? Yes. Yeah. All right. So it's Forgotten History, a Black History Month event. So basically, we're going over some forgotten history that our people have. So we're going to deal with some history that our people may not know. So I just want to start off with a few questions. So I'll just start with you. So, what is your nationality? Mm -hmm. Is it Israelite? Thank you. Oh, I'm Mexico. So Mexican? What about you? Yeah. Read that? Yeah. African American? What about you? African American. African American. You said nationality. Nationality. So, what nation do you descend from? Yeah, African American. African American. Me? Yeah. Um, Israelite. Israelite? Okay. African American. African American? Judah. <laughs> okay, the reason I ask, uh, knowing your nationality is important because a lot of times I will ask these questions and I get different answers all the time. I might get Israelite, I might get, I might hear Baptist, but Baptist is not a religion. I mean, it's a religion, it's not a uh, nationality. So it's important that I ask because I want to see where you guys are at as far as what y'all feel about yourself. So um, my next question would be is what does Black History Month mean to y'all? So I'll start with you. <laughs> Me personally. Mm -hmm. Well, what, how do you feel about Black History Month? I mean, they just taught me what they thought I should know. Okay. Hmm. I think it's you know like a great way to remember you know all the, all the achievements that have been made uh, you know by black people. It's an opportunity to get education and to celebrate things that I might be deprived of every other month. Okay. Mm. Um, she had the best example of, like, it's basically to celebrate what they want to celebrate. Mm -hmm. uh, that, um, like, like, you know, super important. Okay. So, like, um, I feel like it's underrated <coughs> due to just um, hidden knowledge mm -hmm. and white supremacy. So it's like a chance to actually talk about Mm -hmm. um, I'll say it's like a good way to pay tribute to the people that came before us. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so I'm going to read a few quotes for us real quick. I didn't get a chance to put them in a the slide, but I'm just going to go ahead and read them for y'all. So, it's one quote by Marcus Garvey. It says, a people without the knowledge of their past, origin and culture is like a tree without roots. Cool. So, can somebody explain to me what that means? Can you say it again? Yeah. I'll read it again. It says, a people without knowledge of their past history, origin, and culture is like a tree without roots. I think, uh, I think we, uh, like, as a black people, if we don't know, like, our true history, we can never be as strong as we truly, like, meant to be. Mm -hmm. And what are, what are roots? What do roots do? They grow. Uh, make the foundation strong. They make the foundation strong. Mm -hmm. So basically, Marcus Garvey, what he's saying is if our people don't know their past, it's hard for them to have a good root when it's time to move forward. So when it's time for me to try to build and grow as a nation, I can't grow properly because I don't have a good foundation. When things go wrong, but like when you look at um, a house and a tornado hits, if it has a strong foundation, 
it's going to be somewhat good. But with a weak foundation, it's going to crumble. Same way for people, right? Let me read the next one. It says, whatever affects one indirectly affects all indirectly. I can never be what I ought to be until you, until you are what you ought to be. This is interrelated structure of reality. It was a quote by Martin Luther King. So basically what he's saying is that what affects me indirectly is going to affect you also. So basically what I, how, how, what I know about myself is going to affect you and you and you. So we all have a particular way of thinking about ourselves. It shows in the rest of our people. Because we all tend to think the same way, right? Mm -hmm. So we can get into the presentation. So, so we're going to start off reading through the scriptures and, and giving, a, uh, giving, us, giving you our take on our history through the scriptures. So we're going to start in Deuteronomy. Now, anybody know who this man is right here? Moses. Moses. He's the one that came with the Ten Commandments, right? right? Now, you know anything interesting about the picture we have here? It's a black Moses. Now, a lot of times people say it's a black Moses, a white Moses, as if there are different versions of them. Now, are there more than one versions of Moses? No, it's the real Moses. That's the real Moses. Okay. All right. So, Deuteronomy 28 is going to be the foundation of what we're teaching. That, anybody ever heard of Deuteronomy 28? I'm sure you two have. I'm sure you have. Anybody else? So Deuteronomy 28 is basically the blessings and the cursings of a particular people. And what people is that? Israelites. Israelites. So how many of us have heard of the Israelites before? OK. So we're going to start in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse. we're going to start at verse 1. Let's read that real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments. So who is Moses speaking to in Deuteronomy? The Israelites. He's talking to the Israelites, right? right? So we know the audience is the Israelites. Now what was happening prior to the Israelites coming and getting the commandments? Where were they? Egypt, yep. doing what? Slaves. Slaves. They were slaves. Right. So now these are the same people that we're talking about. So we're going to start at verse 15. Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. Mm -hmm. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So in brief, basically he's telling the Israelites, if you don't listen to what I'm telling you, curses will happen. So what, what are curses? Like bad things that are like kind of like set apart, I guess. Bad things, right. So he said, if you if you listen, if you don't listen to what the Lord says, then I'm gonna curse you. And we read, remember we read in verse one, he said, if you do listen, what was gonna happen? Anybody remember? Read 28 1 real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass If thou shalt hearken diligently Unto the voice of the Lord thy God To observe and to do all his commandments Which I command thee this day That the Lord thy God will set thee on high Above all nations of the earth So if they did listen He said I will set you on high above all nations That's a blessing right? Mm -hmm. So that was the blessing he was going to give And if you read from 15 from uh, from 1 to 14 he tells you all the blessings that he would give to the Israelites if they listen so 15 on down is what we're going to deal with today it's going to show you what happened to these people because they didn't listen so let's read 15 again Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15 but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So, why, anybody know why these curses are so important? Mm -hmm. Why reading this is so important? Because mm -hmm. it explains, like, why we as a people have been through so much, like, what we've been through. It explains, like, why we're going through it. Okay, anybody else? Has anybody ever read the curses before? I know you, you, and I'm sure you, I'm assuming you. No? Okay. All right. But the curses are there to explain who these, who these, who these things happen to. So we, got, we can look at this and see who these things happen to. 
So we're going to go through some of these curses, and we're going to kind of identify who these people, who, who it pertains to. Because for us, we're teaching that it pertains to the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. So let's read some of these curses. Let's go to verse 16. Verse 16. Verse 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be. So the first curse was, cursed shalt thou be in the city. Now, mm. did these things, the curses that Moses uh, said that would happen to these people, did they happen right away? Or did it, did it take time for these things to happen? Anybody know? It happened right It happened over time. So the curses, it took over time, it was over time, because he's just giving you the stipulations right now. Mm -hmm. Right now, he's just giving you the contract. So it took time for them to break that contract in the first place. So over time, it, it, they, they disobeyed the Lord. And the curses came. So one of the curses is, is cursed shall thou be in the city. So wherever these people went, they'd be cursed in their cities. So what, what makes up a cursed city? Or what is a cursed city? Mm -hmm. I mean, what did we say a curse was before? Something that's bad, right? Yeah, bad. So what is a bad city? What makes them a bad city? Corruption. Corruption. Okay, what else? Disease. Disease. Poverty. Poverty. What else? What are you? What makes up a cursed city, a bad city? Crime. Crime. So these are things that make up these cities. So he said one of the curses that applies to these people is they be cursed in their cities. And what you see right here, you have our people. They were they were sold on different slave on slave blocks. They were they were brought to different places and they were sold from different cities. So he said, "Cursed shall thou be in the city." Let's uh, go to the next next part. And cursed shall thou be in the field. So now, anybody familiar with Wall Street? Yeah. How you doing, bro? Mm. What's your name? Justin. Justin. Okay. So Wall Street. It says a slave market located located where Wall Street reached, the East River, was established in, in 1711 as a place where enslaved blacks and Native Americans could be hired or purchased. So a lot of people don't know the history of these different things. There was a slave uh, auction block right there where people got sold. Anybody, anybody familiar with that history? But there's a lot of history that we're trying to bring to our people. But the Lord said that our people be cursed in their city. So a lot of these the different uh, markers are left within these cities. Read the, read the last part. And cursed shalt thou be in the field. So he said, not only would you be cursing your cities, which was the poverty, the mm. uh, you have a lot of violence, crime, different things in the cities. But he also says, cursed shall you be in the field. So if you see here, you see African Americans picking cotton and working in the fields, right? Mm -hmm. So was our people, is this historical facts, right? Yeah. Our people went to slavery? Mm -hmm. So he said, our people would be cursed in the field. So these are the curses that he gave to who? What people did we name in the beginning? The Israelites. So he said these people would be cursed in their fields. We had to pick sugar cane, tobacco, right? All these different things, cotton. Let's go on to the next slide. So you see here, you got us picking up, uh, the sugar cane right here. You got the cotton at the top. But this is the history that, that, we, um, that we're taught. And a lot of us don't know that this history right here is actually mentioned in the Bible. So he said one of the bad things that would happen to these people is they would be forced to be working in, the, in, the, uh, in hard labor, hard bondage, which was slavery, right? Mm -hmm. Verse 17. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. So, what is it? Anybody know what he means by cursed shall be thy basket and thy store? You might want to take a shot. What is a basket used for? Holding things. To hold things? Yeah, to hold things, right? Right. Your savings, your money, all the mm -hmm. different things, right? So he said, "Curse shall be your basket and your store." Now, as a, he's talking, he's talking as a nation. He's not talking about individual people. The Israelites was a whole entire nation. So he's saying they, they'd be cursed with their savings, their finances, all the different things would be cursed. Mm -hmm. So if you look at um, the type of businesses that the blacks, blacks, Hispanics have, are they thriving businesses? No. When you look at places like uh, you look at Google, you look at. Um, uh, McDonald's, all these different um, big businesses. Are they owned by us? Mm -hmm. Now, what about the businesses that we do have? Are they, do they tend to go far? Mm -hmm. Anybody ever wonder why not? 
you might have a business that might last three to five years. It's not like a best for nothing, that's one. And the that's one thing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when people are, where our people are, are put in a position, they were conditioned in a way where they're, we're not willing to help each other. So you might have a business, instead of me supporting you, I go shop with other nations. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But he said, curse shall be your basket in your store, meaning we would not be able to bring forth uh, fruit in our own communities. So when you look at the um, liquor stores on the corner, who's in the liquor stores? Middle Easterns. Middle Easterns. Who owns mm -hmm. the grocery stores? Middle Easterns. <laughs> Who owns all the Coney Islands? Y'all have Coney Islands out here? Yeah. Y'all have them out here? So we have them on every corner. In, in, we're from Detroit. Every single corner has a, a Coney Island, a gas station, a liquor store. I never see our people. If I see them, they're working for the people that way, right? Right. But he said, curse shall be thy basket in thy store. Our people are not are not thriving in the things that they do. They may, you might have some people that make it, you have people that are basketball players, but they're owned by somebody. They're working for somebody. But for us as a nation, a lot of times we don't work for ourselves. We don't and we don't thrive we don't thrive in the things that we do. But that's another curse that he gave us. Actually, reverse um, reverse eighteen. Verse 18, mm -hmm. curse shall be the fruit of thy body. What is the fruit of thy body? The kids. The kids. Mm -hmm. So he said, curse shall be the fruit of thy body. Mm. Why, would, why would it say something like that? What does that mean? Like your generation might be cursed after the next generation and so forth. Okay, so generational curses. Mm -hmm. So my kids would be born into the same ghettos, the same poverty, the same crime as I was. And it tends to get worse after generation after generation, right? So the generation I grew up in, and my kids' generation could be a little bit different. One's could be worse than the other. But he said, curse shall thou be, I mean, curse shall be the fruit of thy body. Read on. And the fruit of thy land, mm -hmm. the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Now at this time, we did a lot of agriculture, meaning all the stuff that we did, it would not be prospered. So we had, we grew our own food, we did everything on our own, we made our own clothes. He said, if we don't keep his commandments, a curse would be that our people would be cursed in, in agriculture and our kids and all the things that came from, came from us. Right? Go ahead. Verse 19. Curse shalt thou be when thou comest in. Comest in, meaning curse shall you be when you're born. So when I'm born, I'm, I, I, I fit the same stereotypes mm -hmm. that the people that, have been, that are still here, here on this earth are fitting. I, I take on the same stereotypes, I take on the same proverbs, I take on the same bywords. We're going to deal with that in a second. So when I come out, my kid is called an African American. He's called a, a Negro, a, a black. He's taking on the same curses that I'm, I hold as a parent. So my kids are going to take on the same curses when they're born. Go ahead. And cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. And many of our people, when they die, they die not knowing who they are. So when you say something like, I'm an African American, or I'm a black, or I'm an African, that's not, that's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. Anybody know where that name African American came from? Or actually, how long have we been called African Americans? I don't know how long ago where it came from. Where did it come from? Two white The names. The names, yes. But who originally gave us that particular title? And has that always been the title? So in, eight, in 1987, I think it was, anybody familiar with Jesse Jackson? Mm -hmm. Anybody know who he is? Mm -hmm. He's the one that gave us that title. He thought it sounded good. He gave us the title um, African Americans. Prior to that, it was Afro Americans. Prior to that, you had Negroes, you had Blacks, you had Colored. So these were these were legal names that they gave us. So when I sign up, when I fill out a uh, a job application, I would be filling out colored. I'd be filling out Negro. These were legal names that they called us. So why is it that our names are changing year after year after year after year? It makes no sense. But as a nation, I should be able to say the same name I have today was the same name I had two thousand years ago. But he's saying, "Curse shall, uh, shall that be when I come and stand when I go out?" Because my a lot of people's kids and a lot of grown ups. In general, they come in, they know they, they're, they know themselves as blacks, colored, African Americans, and then they die the same way. Meaning they don't know, they never found out who they were. Because that's not the nationality that the Lord gave us. He gave us the name Israelites. Let's go ahead, let's go on. Verse 20. Verse 20. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke, 
and all that thou settest thine hand on to for to do. So basically he's saying that everything that we do will be cursed. Mm -hmm. We know the roots from it because of what we're going to continue to read. Go ahead. Until thou be destroyed, mm -hmm. and until thou perish quickly, because of the wickedness of thy doings. So what is the wickedness of thy doings? What is that? And sum it up in like two words, mm -hmm. a few words. Remember, he gave us the commandments to keep, right? Mm -hmm. If I don't keep the commandments, what am I doing? If I break a commandment, what is that called? A sin. A sin. A sin. Mm -hmm. So he's saying because of their sins, all these things are going to happen to you. You're going to be, you're going to be destroyed because of, the, because of the acts you committed towards me. Because he made a covenant with them prior to, right? Let's read on. Whereby thou hast forsaken me. Actually, one second. So read 20 again real quick. Verse 20, the Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke in all that thou settest thine hand on to, for to do, until thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly. Okay, and I mentioned before that I said the Israelites are not just the so-called blacks. You have the blacks, you have the Hispanics, mm -hmm. you have Native Americans. It's because all these curses we're reading apply to all these people. So anybody know what this picture is? You have, you have the Native American right here. You have the Kisadors right here. More Native Americans right here. This is 1492. That's what this is. So what happened was he sent destruction on the Native Americans. Because mm -hmm. prior to Columbus getting here, was there people here? Before Columbus got here, was there people here? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, 1492. Native <laughs> yeah. Americans, they were already here. They've been here for hundreds, thousands of years prior to Columbus actually getting here. And all that stuff is mentioned in the Bible too. But he sent these people on us because of what? Be ready. He's breaking them off. That was the reason. And then right here you see, remember it said, um, we be cursed and he be, it would be a rebuke. A rebuke is a correction. And then we, be, we wouldn't prosper in the things that we do. So anybody familiar with Black Wall Street? In Tulsa, Oklahoma? Yeah. So, Somebody tell me a little bit about what they know about Tulsa, or what was going on there at that time. It was like a thriving black community, and um, I forget what happened, but it was like a massacre, and they had burnt everything down and killed a whole bunch of people. Mm -hmm. Right, so we were just getting out of slavery, and we decided to build our own stuff. And the thing was, they wouldn't allow us to even sell land to another white person. Basically, it was segregation. So if I had 40 acres of land, I couldn't sell it to a Caucasian or another nation. Well, basically, at that time, you're Caucasian. But I could only sell it to a brother. So what they did was they sold the land to each other, and they built up a community, which was in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And they had, they had lawyers, they had doctors. They basically had their own private community right here. So they told them, you got to go do what you want to do with your people. But what they did instead was they saw that we were doing good. We had banks. We had we had everything. Everything that U.S. has as far as uh, government and stuff like that, we had everything within that city. We were our own little community right there. But what they did was they bombed it. They bombed it. They destroyed everything. And did they give us any money back for it? Anybody know? Did we get any type of re reparation or anything for this happening? What they did was... They wrote it off as a um, race riot. So under a race riot, you can't use your um, insurance plans, meaning all that stuff was not covered. None of that stuff was covered. So basically, we were just screwed. We couldn't do nothing after that. Our city was gone. People, uh, uh, thousands of people were dead because of this. But once again, he said that all the things we put our hand to will not prosper. And one thing we did, we tried to build a city, and guess what? It didn't prosper. Third. Thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Anybody know when this happened? Mm. Based on what we're seeing right here in these pictures. Betroth means to engage or be promised to uh, a, a, a man or a woman. That's, it's an it's a, it's a old term of engagement. So he said, thou shalt betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. When did that happen? Like in slavery, like the slave masters used to like sleep with the um, they used to sleep with like different women and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Right. Anybody seen um, Roots or 12 Year Slave or what was the uh, more recent one? Um, Birth of a Nation. 
all those movies had these depictions in it because that, that was our history. So what we're reading through these curses is the history of our people because Moses prophesied this stuff happening to our people thousands of years before it happened because he said, if you don't listen, this is what the Lord showed me he was going to do to you. So read from the top. Verse 30, thou shalt betroth a wife and another man shall lie with her. So in slavery, our people, our women were raped by the uh, slave master because that's what the, the Lord put that one of them cursed. That's one of the things that was going to happen to our people. But in slavery, we didn't have any choice in that. So if a, if a, if a man came and said, he want to take my mm -hmm. wife, did I have a choice? Mm -hmm. What happens if I fought back? Yeah. You'd be killed. Yeah. They might kill the woman. They might kill the woman in front of you and then kill you. Mm -hmm. But these are things that would happen to our people. This is the type of stuff that did happen to our people. Now they show these things in movies and a lot of people don't really, they don't really, they don't really take it to heart. But this is our history right here. Read on. Thou shalt build an house, mm -hmm. and thou shalt not dwell therein. So now we're still in the time period of slavery. So we should build a house, but not dwell therein. So what housing did we build as slaves that we never got to live in? The White House. White, White House. house yeah. Even the plantation houses that they had. We didn't live in the houses. We, left, we lived in a little shack, right? Mm -hmm. uh, crammed in there with the rest of the people, right? So he said we should build a house, we will not dwell in it. Read on. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. Now you look at the the, uh, the crops we were actually dealing with. We dealt with crops, we dealt with cotton, sugarcane, all the monies and things that came from that. We didn't get the benefits. We were just used as free uh, labor workers. That's all we were. Verse 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, mm -hmm. and thine eyes shall look. So he said, thy sons and thy daughters should be given to another people. Mm. So is that talking about uh, daycare? Is it talking about me just giving, giving you my child for a moment? What are we talking about here? Soul. Soul, Soul right. Mm -hmm. He said, your sons and your daughters will be given to another people. Meaning, my kids, when I, when I birth my kids, my, my wife births my kids, they're not going to be with me. As soon as, your, as soon as your kids are born, they might be sent off to Virginia, sent off to Minnesota, sent off somewhere. But he but read it again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. And when he says another people, he's talking about somebody outside of your nation. Remember, he's talking to one group of people. So he's saying that your nation, your kids are going to be given to a whole another nation, sold to a whole another nation. Go ahead. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. So our, our, the mothers, the fathers, they will all be crying mm. because their kids are being sold and taken from them right in front of them. There's nothing they can do about it. But read the last part. And there shall be no might in thine hand. No might. They had no, phys no physical might, no um, economic, no financial might at all to get their kids back. So if somebody wanted, if the slave master wanted to come take my kid, that was it. There was no fighting back. It was, you're taking my kid and that's it. But that's one of the curses. All these curses are, were played out through history. 33. Verse 33. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. So what is the fruit of your labors? Mm. Let's bring it up to the day. What's the fruit of your labors? That'd probably be a hard word. Right, your check. Everybody get a check a week. So fruit of your labors is your check, is your money. So he says that the fruit of thy land and the fruit of thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. So I would go work in the field all day. I'm not getting no no reward for that. I might get a meal, but the meals that they gave us, the same meals they gave to the pigs. So I'm not really getting a reward. So you look at this, look at the picture. We got a picture of a, um, a depiction of a slave working in the field or coming from working in the field. So the scripture is saying that another nation that we don't know is going to eat up all the all the, um, the labors that we had. But read on. And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. So he's saying that we will continually be oppressed and crushed. So when we looked at slavery, our people continue to be oppressed throughout the years. And then even after getting out of slavery, did things change a ton? They didn't change that much. Now, even if, if you look at something like, um, something like um, civil rights, after we got our rights, after MLK and all these different things came on, and the segregation, we started getting together, Things didn't change. They just kind of put a, a put a hood over it. 
So for instance, it was blatant racism before, right? Before with uh, MLK, all of a sudden it was all blatant racism. And then eventually it turned into Jim Crow laws. Well now, I can't use the same uh, restrooms as you. I can't use the same schools as you. All these things are still in place. I was still getting, um, you had, uh, what's the, the young man's name? Emmett Till? You had situations like that happening. So it's not open out, out in the open anymore. Now, to this day, it's, it's, it's um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's covered a little bit more. So for instance, what they do is they have commercials where they have interracial um, couples. They have, they try to find ways to cloak the racism by showing that there's, um, I'm trying to think of the word, there's integration, people are coming together. If they show that people are coming together, then you forget about all the racism that you see, what has been shown on the news through gun violence, um, police brutality, even looking at, even looking at the, uh, the neighborhoods we live in. That, that alone is a constant reminder of segregation. Why is it that this one nation of people, no matter what, they have to live in the ghetto? Now, you, have a, you can make a choice to say, I'm going to leave, but it's not that easy. It's not always that easy. If, you're, if you grow up on food stamps, low income, and you have no father in the house, all you see is uh, drug dealing, gang violence, what are you going to do? You do the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. Not everybody, but a lot of people get caught up in that. There's some people that make it to college, make it past that, but a lot of people stay in it. But read it one more time. Verse 33, the fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. So even after slavery, our people were still oppressed. The oppression stayed there. Read verse 34. Verse 34. So that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes. So our people were oppressed so much that we are mad at seeing the, the, the conditions we're in and the things that happen to our people and the things that we lack as a nation. It makes some of our people mad. But also, we read back in 28 that our people would be smitten with madness. Some people don't even see that we're, in, that we're still being oppressed. That we're still living in, in uh, captivity today. There may not be chains, there may not be shackles or anything, but it's the same conditions. 36. Verse 36. The Lord shall bring thee and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. So, once we got to this land, once we got picked up on the west coast of Africa, we came to, we went to Brazil, we went to South America, Central America, we went to Europe, we went to North America. When we got there, what religions did we participate in? Christianity, Christianity Catholicism, um, uh, Muslims religion, we, we got into all that different all that different stuff. So we're saying that once we got to these places, we went to we uh, dealt with gods that our fathers didn't know. The God that we that, that belongs to us, the so called blacks and, and Hispanics, is the God of Israel. The one that we read of in the Bible, he's a God of only one nation of people. That's a God that our fathers knew. But he said once you went to other nations, you would learn of another God. But why would they set up another God over you? Why would they teach you another God? Why is that? Think about um, 1611. When they put us in slavery, um, they had Sunday. Like Sunday, they call it Sunday worship. Anybody know the history of Sunday worship? Why they do Sunday worship today? Basically, what happened was that was the day they used. They gave us that day off so they could teach us their doctrine, which was um, this image right here the white image of Jesus. Prior to 1611, there was no such thing. Prior to that, there was no such thing. But they taught us this. So if I teach you that, that you're, the God looks like me, looks like the oppressor, then you're going to start to see him as a good person. You're going to see him as, he's the one that's giving you religion, he's the one giving you um, food, clothing, education. If I, if I tell you that the same man that's providing all these basic needs for you is, a, is, is the same person that uh, looks like God, you're going to start to see him different. You're going to start to see there's no, there's no wrong in him. But these are the gods that we end up serving when we got here. And my point is, we didn't know this image or this God prior to coming here in 1611. Read on. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, 
and a byword. Now keep in mind that all these things we're reading are curses. So it was a curse for us to learn another God. That was a bad thing. What's supposed to happen? But now he's saying now it should become an astonishment. What is an astonishment? Anybody know? Or what does it mean to be some for something to be an astonishment? What is that? Non-existent. Repeat that. Somebody says something. Non-existent. No. Some say say I say something's astonishing. So it's something that's uh, that's amazing. That's um, that's the best way I can say it's astonishing. It's, it's shocking. It's shocking. So he said we become an astonishment. We are the only people that do stuff like this. These are a few. There's a few. There's other people that do stuff like this every so often. We're not the only, but for the most part, I'm saying they do. But my thing is, is that um, when you look at stuff like like this, we make this into fashion trends. We make stuff like this into fashion trends. Why are you something else? An astonishment. He said we'd be an astonishment to other nations. So you look at um, our family structure. You look at um, a mother and a father. Majority of our houses, are there mothers and fathers there? Yes. Majority? No. no. In all honesty, there's not. In my house it was, but when I talked to many other people, they all said, no, I just had one. I might have had my grandma. So majority of our households were broken up. There was, there was ways it was broken up. It was done purposely. But it's an astonishment to see that a brother will go lay down with a sister, get her, get her pregnant, and then leave. It's an astonishment that a, a woman will sleep with a bunch of men, get pregnant, and then just keep using, um, um, just trying to get child support. People do it. I'm not saying anybody here does it. But it's stuff that, that, that does happen. And other nations that look in, they're like, what's wrong with these people? Why do they keep making babies they're not going to take care of? Hmm. Or something like gang violence. We have Crips, we have Bloods, we have, um, what else we got? I forget the names. But you got a lot of different, a lot of different games. Our people, they fight over, over blocks that don't even belong to them. Owned by the government. All, this, all these housing, all this stuff, they're owned by the government. But we're fighting over something that's so simple. Say, for instance, I'm in poverty. My people are in poverty. I'm living on whatever block, so-and-so block. I'm poor. Brother next to me is poor. Everybody on this block is poor. Everybody in this to a two mile radius is poor. But we're stealing from each other. What, what sense does it make for me to make you more poor than I am? That makes no sense. That's a crazy nation of people. There's really no way to justify something like that. Now I understand that some people feel like they have no other way, but once again, other nations looking in, it's an astonishment of why these people act this way. It makes no sense. But let's go back, read the second part. And thou shalt become an astonishment a proverb. Anybody know what a proverb is? Yeah. Proverb is a wise saying or something like a stereotype. So the Lord says that our people, wherever they go, they're going to become stereotypes mm -hmm. in these different places. So when I go to China, I'm still known as uh, African American, as a Negro. Um, and saying the same, the same thing they see me as is going to follow me wherever I go. So if they see black men as men that don't take care of their kids, I'm gonna go to Russia and they're gonna think the same thing about me. If I take, if I go to China, they're gonna think the same thing about me. Now there is interracial, people do interracially marry, but a lot of times there's hesitation between it. Why? When it, become, when it comes to a black and another nation. So all three of these words, astonishment, proverb, and byword, actually can be seen as extremely positive statements. These are curses though, that's the thing. I don't know if he came a little late, but these are all curses that the Lord said. He said these are curses. None of these things are good. These are all used in a derogatory way. Oh, at this moment. Yes. Okay. Yes. I was very confused. I'm like, right. So these are all, all right. These, these are words, all used. These are, right. These are all used as derogatory in this context. Sure. So, okay. Just read verse 15 one more time. I just want to make sure we're I'm all sorry. Right. I was just. No, you good. You good. You good. Read verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. <laughs> but it shall come to pass. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So, the, the, basically the anchor of this whole, okay. these verses is the curses. That's what it basically is, bad things happening. So, read, read, read on for the verse. 37? Mm -hmm. Verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. 
So how did we get to these nations again? Remember he said, wherever nation, um, among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. How did we get there? And these other nations. Remember we read it earlier. Slave ships. We got there through mm -hmm. slavery. We got to uh, Europe through slavery. We got to, to uh, South America through slavery. We got to all these different places through slavery. North America through slavery. So he said, you'll become all these things no matter where you go. I might go to Chicago. If I go to Chicago, if I want to go to the city and see the, um, if I want to go to any, any uh, if I go to any ghetto, I'm going to find what nation of people in these ghettos. If I go to any hood, black people. I'm going to see black people. I might see Arab here and there. I might see whites here and there. But majority is usually black and Hispanic. And then certain places you'll see Native Americans. But it's, it holds true wherever I go. Poverty areas always are our people. You gotta sit there and wonder, like, why is it that everywhere I go, I keep seeing these same people in the same exact condition, acting the same exact way? You might have different customs here and there because of the, the city or state you live in, but for the most part, it's gonna be the same exact people. Mm -hmm. But he said, whatever he leads you, which is through slavery. So let's read the last part again, that last part about a byword. And a byword. So a byword. Anybody have any idea what a byword is? An outstanding example of something. A byword is basically anything, any name outside the name that you were, originally it belongs to you. So any name that was given outside of the God-given name we were given, which we were given Israel. That was the name that our people were given prior to African-American, Afro-American, Blacks, Negroes. Those are names that we were given. Those are bywords. So when we go to the next page, you see blacks, you have African Americans, West Indians, Haitians, because those people are all our people. Those are all the same people, the Haitians, the um, West Indians, Jamaicans, they're all the same people. Then you have Latinos, you have Puerto Ricans, Cubans, Mexicans, Peruvians, Argentinians, all these different people. You have Native Americans. These are the, the, um, the names they were given. These are names that were given through slavery. African, African American was given to us. Blacks was given to us. Puerto Rican, that was a name given to them. Like, what does the word um, Puerto Rico mean? Anybody know? Did you say the same thing? Yeah. Rich Port. Rich Port. Then you have, uh, what's the other one? Let me see. Or you even have another name like uh, Ethiopian. Anybody know what Ethiopian? People of dark skin. It means burnt faces. They give us a name, they always give us a name that describes us. Blacks, Negro, African American. They give it as names to describe who we are. Ethiopians, Nigerians, nigger. They give us names to explain what we look like. Or you might heard of the Moors. Those are black yeah. people. Moors just mean is a Latin word for black. But they give us these names that just mean that describe our color, that describe us. But these are not God-given names. But he said, wherever I go, I'll be called by these names that you see here. Verse 41. Verse 41. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. He says it very plain now. He says, you're not going to enjoy your kids that you have because it'll go into captivity. That's what happened in slavery, right? Many of our kids were shipped off. And if, if even if they weren't shipped off, we might have been shipped off. Where now we don't see our children. But another curse was that our kids would go into captivity. Generation after generation, captivity after captivity. Go ahead. 43. Verse 43. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee, very high. So the stranger that was within our people is talking about a nation outside of our nation. A different nation of people. He said the stranger that was within us, because when we came out of Egypt, or I'll say Egypt was a world, a world power. So like you see America is a world power, Egypt was the same thing back in that time. So that means that like America has a lot of people that's under them. He has China under them, they have uh, Russia under them. They have a lot of nations that are in subjection to them. Just like back in Egypt, they had nations that were in subjection to them. So we weren't the only slaves in Egypt. You had many different nations that were slaves to the Egyptians. So he's saying that the ones that came out the Red Sea, when we came out the Red Sea, other nations followed us. It wasn't just us that left. Other people followed us too. But he said the people that was within us will get above us very high, meaning they will become rulers over us now instead of us being on top. Remember we read in Deuteronomy 28 and 1, it said that we would be high over all nations if we kept the commandments. Because we didn't, 
The nations that were below us are above us. Go ahead. And thou shalt come down very low. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. Mm -hmm. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, and shall pursue thee, and overtake thee. So what's it mean to pursue? To chase. chase. Meaning no matter where you go, you cannot escape. I cannot say I'm going to leave America and say I'm going to leave poverty here and go to Haiti or go to Nigeria or go somewhere other place and expect to not receive the same curses that I received here in America. They may come in a different form, but it's going to be the same stuff. Mm -hmm. Read on. Till thou be destroyed, mm -hmm. because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee, and they shall be upon so, thee. Basically, he's saying that I'm going I'm to have these curses fall thee wherever you go because you as a nation did not listen to what I told you to do. But read on. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. So what does a sign do? What is the functionality of a sign? To direct. To direct. If I have a Coney Island, I need to know it's a Coney Island by the sign. Some places look like McDonald's without the sign. But that's the thing. The, point, the whole point is that a sign is there to identify what something is. So he said that they should be upon thee for a sign. It's the they is talking about is the curses. The curses will be upon the children of Israel for a sign, or an identifier of who they are. But we don't. And for a wonder, and upon thy seed forever. So forever. We know forever is ever, you know, going on forever. It's, it's ongoing. So he's saying that these curses would be upon our people forever. So we should be able to look at these curses and see who they are today. I should be able to go into the Bible and find out who the Israelites are based on these curses today. So, so far we're reading these curses, and a lot of them fit, our majority of them fit our people. But we're going to read some more. Go to verse 40, 47. 47. Verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things, Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. So because we didn't listen, he said we'd have to serve our enemies. Now a lot of times when we read the Bible, we talk the Bible, they don't teach you that there's a such thing as enemies. But he's saying nations outside of us are enemies. He's saying that you have to serve your enemies. But he's going to tell you exactly what. Go ahead. Which the Lord shall send against thee. And the key point is he said the Lord sent the enemies against us. People say, why did slavery happen? Why did the oppression happen? He said the Lord did. Go ahead. In hunger. So for food. If I want food, I have to go to another nation again. Go ahead. And in thirst. Mm -hmm. If I want water, if I want to pay my water bill, if I want to do anything with any type of liquid, I have to go to another nation. There's, an, there's an, another nation that dictates that collecting rainwater is illegal. Makes no sense, but another nation sets it up. But go ahead. And in nakedness. For clothing, any type of clothing that I want, I have to go to another nation to get it. Go ahead. And in want of all things. That sums up everything. Driver's license, birth certificate, death certificate, burial. Anything I want, I have to go to somebody else to get it. Anything. Go ahead. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. So a yoke of iron. What is a yoke of iron? Shackles. Shackles. So he said the same enemy you're serving for all this stuff, you're going to go to for, uh, he's going to put a yoke of iron on your neck. So, what nations put yokes of iron on their neck? Right. They put yokes of iron on our necks. But there's other nations that did too. But, let's read on. Until he have destroyed thee. So, now he's saying that the yokes of iron will stay on your neck until you're destroyed. So, what does that mean for our people today? Do we have yokes of iron on our neck today? Figure. Figures, yeah. but this is talking about physically, the enemy will physically put a yoke of iron on your neck. But today, I don't have a yoke. Y'all don't have a yoke. He's saying that that yoke will stay on your neck until you're destroyed. Anybody heard of Willie Lynch? Anybody? Anybody raise a hand? It was the making of a, of a slave. But basically, Willie Lynch, he was one of the slave masters. Oh, he sent around a letter on how to make the perfect slave. He sent it around in a very, he's a very, um, it was very useful for them. It helped a whole lot on how to make people subjective, which was the Negroes. So the whole point was 
putting that yoke on their neck was to train them. So if you look at something like a dog, when I put a leash on the dog, what's my point? What's my goal of putting a leash on the dog? To control it. To control it. Mm -hmm. So when I take that leash off, what, sh what should happen? It's going to run away. It should run away. Oh, it should run away. I train the dog with a leash, so when, he, when I take it off, guess what? He's not going to leave my side. That's the same thing he did with our people. Mm -hmm. We had Willie Lynch. They trained us and broke us in a way where, though, we're not going to leave. When you had plantations, you had, you had the ratio was more slaves to, to slave master ratio, right? Mm -hmm. So you had these big bucks, these strong men, and just a few slave masters. But for some reason, our people still felt like they shouldn't, they shouldn't do anything. You had some slave revolts. You had Nat Turner. You had a few different people, right? But they broke us down to a point where I don't have to put the chains on them anymore. So now I bring up to the day. I don't have to put the chains on them anymore because they're not going to do anything. They're not going to go anywhere. But when you look at it, we talked about um, you had to go to the enemy for, for food, for anything you want, and hunger. So you have things like EBT, SNAP. These are things given by another nation. It's not, it's not supplied by our people. So when I want food, when I go to grocery stores, I go to McDonald's, I go to Kroger, Walmart, I'm going to another nation to get that food. Same thing with water. I have to go to other nations. We don't supply these things. And then clothing. The majority of our clothing are made in different places. And we might have clothing brands, clothing lines, but majority of that, the textiles, like the, the cotton, the silk, the wool, we have to go to somebody else to get that. We may produce the shirt, we may make the shirt, put the, uh, the logo on the shirt, but for the most part, we have to go overseas to another nation to get those textiles to make it. So we don't, we don't, automatically own that stuff. I mean, that's the case for the whole world at this point. Mm -hmm. Not exactly, because most, most people, they can make their own. You have Food. Arabs, they can make their own clothes, they have their own textiles. Who? Huh? No, that, that actually, does, that's not, that's a simplification, right? Corporations which are owned by one, two people along with some few shareholders own these things. I mean, white people, Arab people, all are subjected to that capitalist, corporatist uh, uh, power structure. Um, there's no white person in this building right now that if they don't have a dollar can get a bottle of water any different than we can, unless someone gives it to them for free. Okay. It, well, it we're going to use the last 30 minutes for all that. But I want to make it through this, and after that, we'll deal with that right after we get done, all right? So now we look at a one of all things. I'm looking at education. I don't choose, my people don't choose what type of education they receive. I may go to a um, historical black college, but I don't choose what they teach. Somebody else chooses what they teach. It may have the black HB, HBCU on it, but somebody else dictates what they teach. As soon as they start teaching outside of what they told you to teach, there's a problem. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. If I want education, I gotta go to another nation to, to give me that education. Black History Month, a lot of that stuff is is pushed by other nations. They're the ones, they're the ones kind of giving that on that end. They're, to, they're the ones teaching you all the history that you, that you want to know. So if I go to US history class, or I'm in uh, whatever class, history class I'm in, they're teaching me what they want to teach me. The majority of the time, you're not going to see a lot of black history. You might see slavery pop up. You might see Martin Luther King pop up. You see Malcolm X pop up. I never learned about Marcus Garvey in, in, um, in college, in high school. I never learned about um, Stokey Carmichael. I never learned about any other black leaders because that's not what they want to teach you. They teach you what they want to teach you, which is slavery. But they never even deal, deal with that fully. But the whole point is that when I, whatever I want, I have to go to another nation to get it. And then these are the yokes of iron we talked about before. He said the nation that, um, that nation will put a yokes of iron upon your neck. So these are yokes of iron right here. There's different types, like this one right here. If you didn't want to eat, if you didn't want to eat, what they would do is they would take a mask, they would put the food in your mouth, and they would close the mask. Basically what they would do was they would have another slave defecate in your mouth, and they would close it with this. It would make you see, most, most people that, that happened to it, it would die. But look all this stuff up, it's, it's all history. But um, here are other types of yokes. But read verse 49. Verse 49. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flies. Mm -hmm. So he said a nation, he'll send a nation amongst you from far. So a nation that you don't know, he's gonna send from far. So like for 1611, we got picked up on the west coast of Africa. What nation came? 
from European. European, they came from far. They came and they picked our people up. We didn't know them, but it says, uh, from the end of the earth, as swift as an eagle fly. He's letting you know they're, he's giving you a, a representation of what their symbol was, what they came with, what they, what they um, basically what their symbol is. As swift as an eagle fly. Read the last part. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. The nations that picked us up, we didn't know. So 1492, you had Columbus, he came. Uh, the Mexicans and uh, all, the, all the people, the Hispanics over there, they didn't understand uh, Cortez and, um, and Columbus. They didn't understand none of them. But they brought, if, if you read the history, they brought um, Hebrew-speaking slaves with them. Because remember, when we looked at, the, um, at the, the, the map, our people went to Brazil. They went to Central America, South America. So what they did was they even sent some back to, um, to France and Spain. So when they came to us, they already had some of our people. So what they were able to do was they were able to translate when they got here to talk to our people in North America. But when you look at it, we said a nation from far, as swift as an eagle fly. Now if you look at all these, these different nations, you had the neo-Nazis, they have eagle. Um, every nation we look at, you got France, you got Spain, you got Britain, you got Rome, you got Greek. Every single one of them have the, the, um, the symbol of an eagle. Now, anybody know what an eagle represents? Mm -hmm. By any chance? Eagle represents power. That's one of the strongest, greatest birds in the air. It's a conqueror. That's why they sport that type of image. But let's read verse 60. Verse 60. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, mm -hmm. which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. So he said that on top of the other curse he showed, he said that another curse would be uh, diseases. Now, who leads in a lot of different diseases, like high blood pressure, diabetes? What nation leads in that stuff? Statistically, obesity. The Israelites. Blacks. High blood pressure, um, gout, all these different diseases, we lead in them because the Lord gave the Israelites a very specific diet. And if we break that diet, there's consequences. Now you might have other nations that eat a bunch of other food, but the diet was not given to them, it was given to them. That's why those people, or our particular people, suffer from all this stuff. We got other nations that eat sharks, they eat whales, they eat all different foods that the Lord said don't eat. And they, don't, they might get sick, but they don't get sick like we get sick. They're not leading these different things. Look at us. All right, they look at, they, can you read for me? They, you look at us, and um, we're the ones that lead these things. But finish in verse, uh, verse 61. Verse 61. Also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law. So, every sickness is not written in the Bible. Like, you're not going to find AIDS in the Bible. You're not going to find herpes in the Bible. There's certain, certain illnesses you're not going to find in the scriptures. But some you will. But read on them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So, one of the curses was that our people received diseases that weren't even mentioned in the scriptures. And I'm going to show you some. You have things like Zika virus. You might know what a Zika virus is? Mm -hmm. Anybody heard of it? Mm -hmm. So, this is something that our people had to deal with. Now, as far as, was there ever a cure made for it? Anybody know? Now, there was, there was a cure made, basically. They had a cure, but for some instance, if you read the article, just look it up to your history, you look at some of the articles. Um, for the Zika virus, they had a cure and they kept giving it to the Caucasian people. But as soon as it came to us, they didn't have anything for it. So now they said we ran out of the, we ran out of the cure. So our people are sitting there dying and dying from the Zika virus because they allowed it to stay with us. But you have HIV, you have AIDS, herpes, different type of diseases that aren't missing in the scriptures that our people will suffer from. And suffer from gonorrhea, syphilis, AIDS, HIV, all these other things. But that's another curse. Plagues, diabetes. Now let's go to verse 64. No, we already did 64. Let's go to verse 68. 68. All right, Book of Deuteronomy. <coughs> Sorry, Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So, anybody know what Egypt means? 
slavery. It's a, it's a Latin word. It just means slavery or bondage or captivity. And I'll show you that in the scriptures in a minute. But read on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. So he said, I'm going to take you into slavery on ships, but the, the land that you came from, you're not going to see it again. Many of our people, we ain't just all go back and get up and say we're going back to Africa. The majority of people don't even know exactly where we came from. We just say, I'm African, I'm uh, Igbo, I'm this, I'm that. But a lot of times people, they don't even know particularly where they come from. So for instance, if somebody says they're African, there's over 300 different tribes in Africa. So mm -hmm. now the question would be is, which one are you? And a lot of people, they don't even know. But that shows that we don't truly know who we are. But read on. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. So after we got off the ships, the memory said he's going to bring us into Egypt again with ships. Then he said, and there, once you get there, you'll be sold. Go ahead. For bond men and bond women. So when we got, we got picked up on ships, right? That's, did that happen? Once we got picked up, where did we get taken? America. America. Once we got off the ships, what were we doing? We were working. We were, we were slaves. We were getting sold. We went to Virginia. We went to Alabama. We went to Atlanta. We went to all these different places. But read on. And right. no man shall buy you. So he said, once we got to these places, we'd be, we'd be sold to our enemies for buying men and buying women. Buying man or buying woman just means a slave, a slave man or a slave woman. So this is accurate history. Once we got off the slaves, we were slaves. I mean, we were sold. That's, those things happen. And he says, no man shall buy you. That means no man shall redeem you. That's all that means. No man shall redeem you. So when you look, uh, we're looking at the slave ships. So it's talking about how we would be, um, um, what was it, Egypt, brought into Egypt again on ships. So this is what you see here. You see some depictions of us on ships, some paintings of us on ships. So you see here, uh, transatlantic slave trade is showing you the depictions of how how we looked on the ships. We were crammed on it like sardines. We had people um, um, throwing up on each other, people that were sick, there was feces on each other, women that had periods, and guess what? Everything just went away ever. They were just stacked on top of each other. But that's how this stuff happened. But now let's go to Exodus 20 and 2, because we talked about Egypt. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which hath brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So what does he call Egypt? House of bondage, house of slave. So if you read through the scriptures, you see that Egypt is synonymous with bondage. So when he's talking about um, us going on slave ships again into Egypt, he can't be talking about, um, about um, he's, he has to be talking about slavery because the thing is, is that Egypt and, and uh, Jerusalem, how close are they? Anybody know? They're yeah, very close. You can walk. Yeah. But right now you can't walk because they separated the land. You have, a, it's called the Suez Canal. They use it for trade. But they separated the land. So Jerusalem's right there, Egypt's right there. But the point is, is that um, you could walk. You don't need a ship to go from Jerusalem to Egypt. So he's talking about something different. So we can't be talking about um, anything. He can't be talking about going, actually going back to Egypt. He's talking about going back to bondage. But this time, he said he was going to use what? Remember, he said you go into slavery again on what? Ships. Ships. On ships. This time, he's using ships. So Moses is giving a prophecy 3,000 years before it happened, saying that these people are going to go into slavery on ships. And did it happen? Yes, it happened. We read about our kids being sold. We read about our women being raped. We read, we read about all the history that happened to us actually happened, and it's all in the Bible. So we see more of how our people were packed, packed on the ships, all the things that happened to us. Look at this right here. See how packed our people were. They would have our people laying or lying down in these, in these ships. So more, more pictures of it. These are the type of um, type of uh, posters they would have out as far as selling our people. And it says, no man shall buy you. No man shall redeem you. So we had a lot of people that tried to help our people and fight for our people, but we still don't see any type of um, progress. 
they call it pro they call certain things progress, but it's not really progress. If you look at um, MLK, he made a statement after before before he before he died, he made a statement. He said he felt like he was integrating his people into a burning house. Anybody know what that means? He didn't lead them right. He felt like that what he was about to get him into because it was already done. We already about to so-called integrate. He already knew what was about to happen. He said, "I feel like I'm destroying these people just by doing it," and that's. Frankly, what happened? But what's up? I was gonna say, didn't he mention something too? Like before he died, like he wished, like he wouldn't have talked about. He wished he would have informed us more about like fighting for economic rights rather than like fighting for civil rights. I'm not sure. I'm not sure he might have. Players killed. But there's many different reasons why. But I'll take some more questions after this. We got about 10 minutes left on this presentation. So you got him. Okay, he tried to fight for our rights for for um, integration. It didn't work. Yeah, he put us, he got us in a position where now we, we're here, we can teach, like what we're doing right here, this would not be allowed back in his time. So he did pave the way for us to do certain things which are good, but when it comes to integration and, and those different types of things, it wasn't what the Lord wanted. Look at MLK, I mean um, Malcolm X, he tried, didn't work. Had Marcus Garvey, Stokely Carmine, they all had put forth an effort, but we still, they, they all got assassinated, they all got uh, put to death for the things that they tried to do. So the Lord is saying that no other person can save you. Only person that saves our people is Christ. A lot of times people, they separate, they think of the Bible as a fairy tale book. Because you go to church, you learn about um, a certain type of Jesus, you learn about, you learn that God loves everybody, you learn that he forg he's all forgiving, he's all, you learn about a fairy tale man that the Bible doesn't talk about. So now we believe, of a, we, we believe in a God that's not true. So when somebody says, Black history is in the Bible, and the only person that can save it is Jesus. They're like, nah, I'm not messing with that. That don't make no sense. But when you actually see the Bible as what it is, a history book, because that's really what it is. Like you look at any nation, you have the Chinese, you have the Caucasians, you have all these people, they all have records of their history. This is the records that we have, the Bible. There's things in the Bible that you can historically find. Like anybody ever heard of uh, King Hezekiah before in the Bible? They have records in other other nations have records of King Hezekiah and what he did, but it's showing that how how um, how valid the Bible really is. But let's let's go let's go let's go forth. Um, I'm sorry, we got quick. We got eight minutes. Okay, let's go. Let's finish doing this. So this is um, the the name. Anybody know what the name is? It's a mosque in in Russia, mm -hmm. in Romania. That's where that's what this is. It's a mosque. It was built in four, in the 1400s during the um, during the, the during the middle the uh, medieval ages, or medieval medieval times. Anybody know who ruled around that time? Around the 1400s, the uh, dark ages, medieval ages. Well, the medieval times Rome collapsed, correct? So that's what's called medieval. So, no. Go ahead, go ahead. Finish it. Are talking about like in Western Europe? Like, yeah. Yeah. Was it Europeans? Was it blacks? Was it Arabs? Who? I guess the Europeans were. Yeah, the Europeans. That's what they say. They say that the Europeans ruled, but in all actuality, they did not. Well, yeah. Because you had, y'all heard of the Moors, like I mentioned before. Those are the people they say were with the. Dark Ages, it ruled in Spain and Russia and Europe. Mm. And this right here was built by those same people. So these those same people built this and put their records on this wall. And we're gonna go through a few of them. So this is, these are pictures that are on the, the wall of the very name. These are some of the pictures on the wall. So when you see here, you see um, the disciples and the apostles. Now when you look at them, what do they look like? What color are they? They're brown. They're brown people. That's a little different. When you look at, when you go to any Catholic church, Christian church, just anywhere, when you see any type of apostle or disciple or anybody that's supposed to be godly, what do they usually look like? They're usually white. <laughs> but the same people that ruled Russia are the same people they put themselves on this wall. Because this is how they always look. They always look like this. And we'll see in the scriptures too. So go to, um, go to, let's go to Exodus 4 and 6. You have Adam and Eve here. 
Now, if you see, same color people, same color people, dark skinned people. But you see, they always try to scratch these people out. It's called whitewashing. Anybody ever seen the um, like pyramids in, in Egypt and stuff? Have you ever noticed how the noses are always knocked off? Anybody ever noticed that? You look at uh, there's some pyramids and there's uh, statues in Mexico. Nose is knocked off. Any black figure that they find, they knock the nose off because now they can try to they can try to plead his case being a different nation. You can't mistake our nose or anybody else's nose. <laughs> when you put our nose on it, you already know it's a black person. <laughs> now, yes, there are some people with some big noses in other nations, but for the most part, they knock these noses off for a reason. Like we look at the Egypt, the Egyptians. What color were the Egyptians? Or who were they? Who were the Egyptians? Yeah. Were the Egyptians or were the dark skin? They were black people. Yeah. They were dark, dark, very dark people. They were what you call Ethiopians. Oh. The um, what are they? Not Somalians. The um, Watusis. Watusis. Those are those people. Very tall people. Very dark people. But when you look on the on the uh, on TV, they show them as Middle Eastern people, <laughs> as light lighter skinned people. But guess what? They knock them noses off over there because they don't want you to believe that those people were dark skinned people. But you see here, you got Adam and Eve. Next you have medieval paintings. These are all things that you will find in Russia in all the different um, texts about the Middle East, the Middle uh, Middle Ages. You see, these are this is a ruler. There's no slave that dresses like this. This is a king. It's a black king. These are all things you'll find over there in Russia. Another one. More black people. These are all all stuff that you'll find over there in their records. They keep them there. If anybody goes to to Europe or Luxembourg, you'll find statues like this. I forget who it is. I think it's Saint Maurice. Is it Saint Maurice? You'll find a statue of him with a with a shield with a um, a crest. No slave had a crest. Anybody know like a um, a shield? It usually has like a um, an emblem on it. You know what I'm talking about? Y'all know what I'm talking about? So. Those are royal emblems that go by lineage. Royal people, right? So you go to um, Luxembourg, Amsterdam, you'll see statues of these black men with their shields, with their emblems, because those are the people that ruled in that time. But that thousand years, we were the people that ruled. But we Proverbs chapter 23, verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So the main point is for us to, because it says, it's as you think in your heart, so are you. So how I feel and what I believe and the things that I think is what's going to be shown in my actions as a nation. So when you look at our people as a whole, what we what we all think of as a, as a nation, it shows in our actions. We see a lot of um, uh, fornication, we see a lot of killing, we see a lot of uh, poverty, we, we see a lot of bad things coming from our people. So our whole point is to change the minds of our people, change how they think, change how they see themselves. So we see black history like us ruling in Spain and Rome. When they say dark ages or middle ages, we always think of white knights and right. white people in armor. But when we can see that that's us, you see what I'm saying? When I grow up, I'm, I'm looking at superheroes. Every single superhero is white. But people go crazy over Black Panther because he was finally black, right? When you get a black Superman, they, finally, they go crazy because they find he's finally black. So the whole point is in the, these, aren't, these aren't fallacy. These are true things to show that our people really rule over there. So if I think that my people really ruled, I show that my people really had some status, it will, it will boost our people's ego. It will boost our people's um, self-worth. And when I see someone like Jesus Christ being a black man, that boosts my, my confidence too. On top of that, I'm seeing that everybody in the Bible, we didn't get to touch on all of it, but everybody in the Bible, is, he's, they're black. Mm -hmm. The Bible is actually for me, that should boost my confidence. That should boost my self-worth. That means that now I see myself as something, now I can deal, deal with you as something. So now you're going to take that same message I gave to you and give it to the next brother, and then it goes to the next brother, and the next brother, and the next brother. So now we take away from the gang violence. Now we take away from the uh, drug dealing. We take away from all that stuff by changing the minds of our people. So if they know who they are, that change will happen. That makes sense? Yeah. That's the main thing. If our people know who we are, that's when the change will happen. But as long as we call ourselves African Americans, blacks, Christians, uh, Baptists, we're never going to change. But as soon as we know who we are and why we're in a particular situation, then we can change. So, do we have any last minute questions at all? All right, well, I'm also Aaron, Israel United Christ, so thank you for your time.
you know, obviously me and Maya, uh, we're going to do an interview, which is a good part now. My question here is, uh, are you glad you came out to the presentation and what did you learn? Uh, definitely. Uh, so just got a little bit more deeper insights on our history. You know, the curse that plague our people to get real parts to reverse them was about the potential reasons, but more so the Ten Commandments, all the commandments. Right. We're not, let's say, not just the Ten Commandments, but all the commandments. All the commandments. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Second question. Uh, so do you know your nationality after the death? See, that's what I'm like. Okay. All right. We'll take that. We'll take that. Third question. Uh, what is going to be your next move in learning more about your heritage? Uh, dig deeper into the Bible. Okay. Okay. Deeper understanding of uh, our nature earth, why we're here, how we've been placed in our, not in our, our, our place in the world. For the most part. Okay. So dig deeper into that understanding. Okay. Okay. We asked a question too earlier. You were talking about um, basically how do we conduct ourselves or how do we uh, repent back to God living in society, something like that, correct? Yeah, yeah. So some what was the kind of meaning you were trying to get to when you asked that question? Uh, no, it was more so uh, just understanding that uh, these curses, is, it's like a, it's a prophecy. Uh, it's it's going to happen. So how do you distinguish uh, taking action right now in our certain circumstances and just letting God's uh, plan play out? Okay. Uh, just no. trying to find that balance of, between the two, taking action. Like I said, I'm present to be a shoe so like, I'm kind of tasked with uh, dealing with certain issues, things like that, with black students. Mm -hmm. But in turn, you know, you understand, you know, that these issues exist, uh, whether I'm you know, doing the work, or I'm trying to resolve them or not. So that, that, that more so is my question of how to you know, balance out that, uh, I'm saying, putting in work. So that's what you mean. Like, just as a black person, you know, as a black student, right. and then just letting God's uh, prophecies play out. So, uh, well, I hope he gave, right, he gave you right answer around 30. Yeah, but said about just keeping the commandments and then seeing if they flip around. I think another thing we want to add to that too is I think it's Romans 12 and 8. I'm going to write about 12 and 8. So we Romans 12, no, 12 and 18. Sorry, 12 and 18. Where it says we are peaceable with all men whenever possible. So we have to learn that we are living curses. We are uh, uh, penalized for some things we've done. But even in society, it's not us to go out to other nations and tell them we're doing uh, what they're doing wrong, what they're doing to us is wrong, and demand justice from them. We have to correct ourselves. And then while we're correcting ourselves, we learn from this peace to be with them until Christ returns. So we have to just identify who we are, apply the commandments to our life, like the fringes, the beard, everything, uh, no pork, no shrimp, no crab, lab, all that stuff. We gotta apply that. Because what happens is we end up being a world within a world. You know what I'm saying? And that's how we have to see it. We are a world within a world, and we gotta heal our people mentally before anything changes. And then that way we all want court. It's valid. All right. All right, so that's all I got for you, but right, glad appreciate you came you. out. Yeah, definitely. Appreciate you. Ain't seen you in a minute, though. Man, I'm a, I am know, man. I'm going to get it together. Okay, all right. Well, you got the phone number. Just give us a call. All right. Yeah. We'll do. Yes, all sir. Right. All right, Mark City and my name is? Genesis. Genesis. Oh, Genesis, the beginning. All right, all right. Okay, so we got a couple questions for you real quick. Uh, first question is, uh, are you glad you came to the presentation, and what did you learn? I am very glad I came to the presentation, and I learned a lot about like the history of Israelites and also about the history of Israelites. So mm -hmm. I'm really glad I came here. Okay, okay, okay. So, uh, do you know your nationality? Yeah, I'm either a Judah or Israel. Okay, so we, we could say uh, Israelite is a nationality, mm -hmm. and then Judah is your tribe within that nation. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're fine, you're fine. We've got, we got 12 tribes within the nation of Israel, but your nationality, your bloodline, will be Israel. So, yes, Israelite, yeah. Yes, ma'am. So, you know that now? Yes. Okay, all right. And last question. Um, what is going to be your next move in learning more about your heritage? My next move is definitely um, studying the Ten Commandments and the other commandments as well. Mm -hmm. And also just learning more about the Bible history. I'll okay. go from there. Okay. Now, do you have anybody schooling you or tutoring you on how to get to that next level? Mm -hmm. No, I don't think okay. I do. Okay, so what we want to do is tell you that a lot of times when our people try to grow in this truth, right. they need to learn how to be around other people that's in the truth. Mm -hmm. So that's where Leviticus uh, 23 and 3 comes in, in effect, when it talks about um, gathering yourselves, I'm sorry, not gathering yourselves, but um, congregating. Mm -hmm. And Zephaniah 2 1 talks about gathering yourselves together so you don't be by yourself. Okay. So we do have a school in Grand Rapids. Uh, you can go up and come by and go open every Sabbath at 3 o'clock. Right. So if you want to learn some more, if not, you can't get transportation up there, there's a phone number. You got the phone number to the school? Um, Okay, it's gonna be on the flyer. I'm gonna make sure you got it before you leave, though. Okay. All right. So that way, we're gonna, when you read, you do your research. You got questions, whether it be questions about the, the Bible or even questions about how do you uh, uh, build as a sister in this truth, how you uh, start getting your life together, getting your right life according to Bible. I'm sorry, getting your life together as according to Christ. Said we should. All right. Call. That's what we're there for. You can call our number, and then it'll lead you to the website where you can call other schools too. We all teach the same thing. So there's no difference in the, no difference in the teaching you might get. Okay. All right. That's good to know. All right. I'm glad. Came out though. All right, thank All right, you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Right. Yes, <laughs>
Oh, your name already Israel. Yeah, I met you before, man. Down the table, right? Okay, yeah, I remember. Yeah, yeah. What are you talking about the name Israel? What's your last name? Curtis. Oh, okay, so we gotta change that around. Then. Right, so get your, get your name, get Israel, your last name, get your Israelite name. Okay. All right, uh, just got a couple questions. Couple quick, questions quick questions, sorry. Uh, I went to the interview. So my first question is, are you glad you came to the presentation? What did you learn from it? So, yeah, I'm glad I came. I learned a lot, like, when he was talking about, like, the Israelites and just breaking it down, like, how we the, um, like, how we God's people and stuff like that. I just, because I didn't been to church a lot, and they don't, they don't really teach it like that. And, like, in school, when he was describing, like, um, they used to tell us, like, oh, the white man, we was in slavery because they was greedy and stuff like that, and they didn't want to work, so the white man just used us, so black people as a convenience. That's what they taught me in school, but, like, hearing them break it down, it do make sense, like, when you really, like, just, like, like take a time and like let it manifest in your mind right. and not be quick to like just well so and so said this well I was taught this like you gotta learn for yourself and do the research but you know, I learned a lot from it and I'm gonna do some more research you know I like the um the the sub saharan he was talking about the uh, sub saharan slave trade yes sir yes sir that was the first yeah, one I thought of yes, yeah. but I'm gonna do some more research definitely and just you know keep trying to uplift myself and get more information because I'll be trying but like it'd be like I be getting confused with some stuff sometimes. I be like, is this right? So I be like going against myself sometimes. Okay. okay. Yeah. And that, that happens. That's why a lot of times the scripture says, yes. Zephaniah like 2 1 says, gather yourselves together, right? Old nation, not desire. Because what happens, I think we just had the same talk with one of the sisters here before too, where when you're not around other brothers and sisters, it's kind of hard to stay on track. You know, you end up doubting what you're learning, things of that nature. So you have to learn how to come together with one another. You have a transportation already? Transportation? As far as driving or you walk? No, I don't bus. drive. I usually just take the bus or I get rides from people. Okay. Right now, so you have to come visit school and grab this shit. I could get a ride, I could get a ride. I just have a problem. You become a star right there. You open it's this like, every, 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 every like this, y'all take stuff like this. Like, this like, we break all this stuff down. You gotta get there on time. So, yeah, I got here on time. Okay, no, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, because some people like show up late, and then they be like, want to ask questions, like my man did, show up late, oh, yeah. and then want to ask questions at the last minute, but he, he missed a whole hour. Yeah, right. That's yeah. probably why he was confused and stuff. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think that, and then he had his own opinions, you know, certain things, and he wasn't really seeing what we were trying to show him. Right, yeah. right you've seen it. So, and, it's, and that's one of the things we talk about. Sometimes everything we teach is not for everybody. Yes. You know, it's only for a certain people. Like, show them. All right, so my se next, second question is, uh, so do you know your nationality is Israel. Okay, Israelite. All right, appreciate that. I like that. All right, the so last one you kind of spoke on it already earlier. The last question I got is, uh, what is going to be your next move in learning more about your heritage? You said something earlier about you going to start trying to learn yeah. more, but, but what's your next step to that? Actually, sit down and doing it, like, because you know it's crazy. Like, it's just so much going on. Like, it's so much going on in the world right now and in my life. Like, I be forgetting sometimes that is black history, and that's like. It shouldn't be like that. Like I shouldn't be forgetting that. Oh yeah, I forgot it's like history, like, and I be feeling bad sometimes. So you know, I'm definitely gonna do my just do. You know, sit down, do some research, read some scriptures and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. We used to scream Black Power while Heron was pushed, but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark We on Paul's mission We out on the road Purple and gold From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart the scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.